Well, hello everybody and welcome to another video. You find me in Longibion in Svalbard and this is a video that I am both dreading and also kind of excited about. So I'm on my way to meet Simon Dontremont. <laughs> it's just like, he's a fantastic wildlife photographer and his YouTube channel has just blown up over the past couple of years. And I'm gonna meet him and I've, I'm kind of dreading it because I've set us a challenge. We're gonna go on like a photography walk, bit of a chat, think of it as a bit of a podcast with photography. But the reason I'm dreading it is because, well, Longibion is not the most photogenic place in the world and we have blue sky days. And to be honest with you, I'm quite terrified that there's gonna be no images in this video whatsoever. But I am excited about meeting this guy, Simon. Hello, man, nice oh, it's, to meet you. Nice meeting you. Simon, how are you doing? Fantastic. How are you enjoying Svalbard so far? Uh, it's, I mean, it's gonna be an amazing adventure. Basically, to explain to the audience, I pitched Simon the idea that we walk around on, basically go on a photo walk in Longibin, and we're only allowed to bring one lens. What have you brought, by the way? I brought the 100 to 4. Oh, yeah. let, me, let me see, what have we got here? What are we shooting with, first I've of got all? the Canon EF 100 to 400 Mark II on my Canon R5. This is a hard place to take photos, especially in town, but there's, we're surrounded by beautiful mountains all around. I think that's where the shots are. Bright blue sky and uh, uh, it's not a lot of clouds and not a lot of color, uh, so that's gonna be tough. So I'm toying with the idea of putting my camera right off the bat in black and white and looking for shapes rather than colors. Black and white, that is a good, on a day like today, in an environment like this, that's a good idea. So Thomas, what have you, uh, what have you brought for a setup? Well, not only have I stolen your black and white idea, um, also the 100 to 400 with the exact, I'm not gonna repeat it, it's the exact same logic behind Simon's logic. So to add to the many challenges of this, being the blue skies, the difficult, how can I say this? The lack of photogenicness. I can't, how can I? Longibion not being the prettiest place. Uh, to add to that, we can't actually leave Longibion because it's illegal due to polar bears. You can only leave the perimeter of the town if you have a shotgun. You got a shotgun? I, I no. left it home. <laughs> so, let me double check. We are in black and white and it's as I feared, I got too close walking up. We got too close to get the whole thing at 100 millimeters. <laughs> so I'm going to shoot this in, gotta watch the histogram, make sure I'm not blowing out any of those highlights. And I'm going to shoot two or three shots to put a pano together. And uh, I'll see if I can just, Put that together and uh, get that nice W shape and really emphasize, add some contrast in the processing and those shadowy parts that are coming down in a V formation, I think will look really nice. I noticed that when you were taking the shot, you were step by step giving the audience instructions on what you were doing. You were talking about the histogram, the stitching, you were very, because uh, I just straight away I was like, yeah, this is Simon, because your whole channel is so educational. And I just thought, yeah, that is a, that is a born teacher, a natural <laughs> teacher, because you were just articulating everything. We're going to get run over it. Who'd have known that Longibion was the busiest, <laughs> yeah, that's the most traffic in all of Northern Europe. Uh, yeah, I, when I watch your videos, it's just so easy to absorb the information. But when you were shooting that image before, you were talking about Instagram and you were delivering step by step what you were doing, which is great for people watching. I kind of stopped doing that a long time ago because I found I was just repeating myself. With landscape photography, you more or less apply the same techniques every time. And I'm editing my videos and I think I'm just saying the same stuff week after week. So I tend not to do that anymore and just assume that the audience kind of get what's going on. But I don't know if that's a mistake or not. Like, what's, What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm early on in my only a couple of years into my channel, only a hundred videos in, so I'm still kind of finding my way. But I found that if I stick to the basics and the fundamentals and sprinkle in some more advanced topics, that there's a little bit of something for everyone. And I often get comments or emails of people saying, I've been doing photography for 20 years and I still enjoy watching your videos. Yeah, that's Because sometimes I remind people of things they used to know, but have forgotten or forgotten how to apply them or haven't thought about applying them in these different contexts. Simon's onto his second shot already. Beautiful snow bunting. 
Now what I'm gonna do here, I don't want the white background. I want a color background. Ah, shoot. I'm going to try to get the brown building in the background and try to get more color in the shot rather than a white bird against a white background, which can look nice. I can notice the oh, change. Sorry. I'm in black and white. Oh. I can't do the colored background. Well, you can change it. That's raw anyway. You're shooting raw, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. I've noticed the change in Simon's energy when he was photographing a mountain in not very good light versus a snow bunting, which is just over here. I want him to he's get up on that little. I want him to get up on that little tuft of grass. No, he's not going to do it. Trick for wildlife photography: go where the birds are going. Don't go to them. So they're, they're working their way over here. I'm going to lay down over here and just wait for them to show up. So here we have Lonkigan's rarest wildlife. <laughs> Unbelievably cute dog. <laughs> I thought that was an arctic fox, so I ran down and <laughs> it was a dog, but the dog was so cute. I'm a big dog guy, so there we go. I'm gonna, Simon, I'm throwing my first image uh, out there as this beautiful little dog, little Longibian Svalbardian. He was cute poop. though. He was very cute. Very quickly, just let me thank the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. If you need a website to showcase your photography, an online gallery, a members area, an online store, well, with Squarespace, you can do it all yourself, build it all, register your own domain, and have a professional looking website without any web coding experience whatsoever. So if you fancy giving that a go, go to squarespace.com forward slash heat and you get a free trial. And if you like that free trial, use the offer code Heaton for 10% off your first purchase. Now back to the video with Simon and myself. So Simon, YouTube. You've been doing YouTube now for two years and it is undeniable that your channel has just exploded. Uh, you're getting views that us photographers only dream about and I know how powerful that is because I've been doing it for 10 years and it's completely changed my life. And I see what you're doing and how successful you are and I'm thinking, Oh man, this guy's guy, you're just living the dream right now. Has it changed your life? Would it's you been that? great, it's been great. I've kind of done it as a, as a transition career for some, a little bit of enjoyment in, yeah. in early retirement. Uh, I'm kind of a goals oriented person. I like waking up on a Monday morning and uh, saying, I'd like to have something accomplished by Friday. So uh, it's been uh, great. And, and as you know, once you start getting some reach on social media, you wake up every morning, you open up your email, and you've got some oh, interesting offers to, do you want to try this, do you want to do this, and so on, so. A lot of terrible offers. A lot of terrible, terrible offers. 90%, 95% terrible offers. It's a lot of work going but through But every the now offers. and again, there are some there's a golden pearls. nuggets. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. And, and I think the best thing, rather than saying the best thing are the financial rewards or whatever, it's being able to selectively do what you want. Yeah. and having some control over, although these 10, 10, 10 things I could do, these three are the things I want to do the most, and if you're lucky enough to get offers in that area, then it's just a wonderful opportunity. Nicely done. Oh. We are making our way towards the famous polar bear sign with the very noisy dog kennels behind us, if you can see dogs barking, but I spotted a shot, my first landscape shot. Uh, that, you know, not including the dog one, obviously, which is clearly the winner of the video, clearly. But I'm looking and I'll be, I'm struggling. We've got harsh light. I know what landscapes are to come on our trip. So this to me is just like garbage compared to what we're about to experience. But then again, I think I'm spoiled. Uh, but in the far, far distance, I'm seeing lines and minimalism and layers. But first, let's not get run over. Not just vehicular traffic. Check this out. Hey, we could do that, and that's how we should get around. We should. Oh, wow, very cool. Yes, I want to do that. Right, anyway, nice shot. Long lens, 400 mil. I'm thinking square, a square crop, because I'm going to go in all the way at 400, compress the landscape. And I don't know what it is. I don't know why I always choose a square composition. But I certainly think with minimalist images, it just helps contain the minimalism. It makes it clear what it is. It's not confusing. And I don't know if that makes sense. Like, I'm not very good at articulating my thoughts, but uh, 
that's what we're doing. So let's see, I don't have a polarizer either, which is a mistake. There we go, a little bit of light on the distant mountains, layers, compression. I think that's all right. I'm, I'm surprised myself with that. Oh, there we go. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have to see if I can uh, steal that later. Did you get the shots? Yes, I did. Uh, I decided I didn't like the foreground ice, so I put, uh, uh, which is not a great composition technique, really. I put the I put the mountains way down at the bottom, 10% of the frame with a black strip of water at the bottom, and just let the photo breathe with some room above it, uh, including some of that cloud cover, including that dark cloud. So I'm not quite sure how it's going to work, uh, whether or not I need to crop it to be a thinner horizontal strip or whether or not I'm going to leave it two by three. So no trip to Longyearbyen is complete without visiting the infamous polar bear sign. This is it. We have reached the end of the road. We can go no further due to risk of polar bear attack. This is as far as we dare go. We have made it back into Longyearbyen and I can think of nothing more than coffee and cake because I am freezing. You're all right, you're from flipping... I'm from Canada. Canada, Very right? Good. Yeah. You're hardy. I'm not, I'm suffering. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Just a bit of a walk and chat. I think we can all agree that my dog photograph was the one. Although, <laughs> no. We'll yeah. see. Well, it may be, actually. Yeah. It's this been, was hard. This was very hard. This was, I knew this would be a tough challenge. And it didn't disappoint. It was a tough challenge. But yeah, thank you so much. It was nice to meet you. A, pl I, a pleasure. I mean, we're going to spend 10 days together, so make sure you tune in in future videos. But uh, yeah. I'll you. decide a little bit later if I like them, but it's looking good so far. Yes. Make sure that you check out Simon's channel. Link in the description below. And I will see you all next week. Cheers, guys. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye.